You know, we have spent the past, oh, I don't know how many lessons talking about converting a Boolean expression into a logic circuit, converting a logic, uh, logic circuit into a Boolean expression, and taking a Boolean expression and converting that to a truth table. But turns out that a lot of the time we end up starting with a truth table. Now, how do you go from a truth table to a logic circuit? That, that, that's magic. Actually, it's not. We have two different standard formats for Boolean expressions that allow us to, well, they support the transition from a truth table to a logic circuit. Let's, let's uh, first of all, let's look at something really simple here. Now this three input truth table has, well, three inputs, which means we have two to the third or eight possible combinations of ones and zeros. I'm listing them out in order here. Um, now, really, a, a simple truth table of a logic circuit for an AND gate, let's say just X equals A and B and C. Now, if I have this truth table, we know that the only time that an AND gate outputs a 1 is if all of its inputs are 1, right? And that happens in this last row right here, all right? So, the truth table for an AND gate looks like all seven zero. well, when we have three inputs, seven zeros and one one. There's exactly one row that has a one output. Yeah, but what if, what if we, this is not the row that we want that one input to be at. Let's say I want it up here. All right, still one one, right? <clears throat> and, and if we say it out like a, a sentence, it, it still uses the word and. What I wanna do for this truth table is output a one if A is a one and B is a zero and C is a zero. Another way of saying that is if A is a one and B is not a one and C is not a one. Well, we just simply invert B and C. And by placing inverters over just of our specific inputs in our AND gate, we can actually move that one to different locations. Let's try another one. How about if we want to move this one, we're gonna take away, we'll change the circuit, the, the expression we've got here. Let's say that I wanna move the one to this position. Still an AND, right? So we still have A and B and C, but it's not looking at all ones this time. We're looking at B being a zero while A and C are one. So let's try that out in the sentence again. I want to output a one if A is a one and B is not a one and C is a one. So we put a bar over B, all right? Now, we can use this ability to move this one to different locations, to different positions in our truth table in order to, well, create a truth, to create a Boolean expression from any truth table. Let me show you. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna edit this truth table just a bit. Let's say that I want to create a truth table. I don't know. Uh, that outputs a one if I have exactly two digits next to each other that are the same. <laughs> Let me try that again. And please understand, you know, I'm just making something up now. We're just coming up with a truth table. I have a truth table. I have a requirement that is going to be represented by a truth table. So I have three zeros in a row here. So that's not exactly two, that's three. But I have two zeros next to each other that are the same followed by something that's not the same, right? So I want a one in that position. Now, I don't have two digits next to each other that are exactly the same here, but I do have exactly two digits that are the same next to each other in this fourth row. I have two ones next to each other, and then, uh, then the third digit is a zero, all right? The fifth row, I have two zeros next to each other that are exactly the same, but the one is different, so we'll put a one in that row. And we jump down to the seventh row, which is the last row where we have exactly two digits next to each other that are the same, and the third digit is different, all right? So, 
All the other rows, there's no other row in this truth table where I have exactly two digits that are the same next to each other, and then the third digit is different. So all of these rows, all these other rows, are going to have zeros, all right? Now, yeah, I know, I just came up with a truth table. There it is. And now what we need to do is come up with a Boolean expression in order to represent that truth table so we can implement it in electronics or in circuit form, right? Well, if you look at this truth table, and in fact, before we do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this or expand this truth table into, um, I, I, I'm going to make a couple more columns. So I'm going to have x sub 0, x sub 1, x sub 2, and x sub 3. All right. Now, the reason why I made four columns here is because I have four ones. And... I'm going to make each one of these X's, I'm going to make this one, I'm going to take one of the ones from the original truth table for X, I'm going to put it in one of the columns for one of those X0, X1, X2, and X3. Um, so in X1, I'm going to take this one from the fourth row, put it there, all the other rows I'm going to have as zero. Then X2, I'm going to take the one from the fifth row, put it there. All the other rows, I'm going to have zeros. Then the x sub 3, I'm going to take the 1 from the seventh row. All the others are going to be zero. All right. Now, all I've done is just simply taken, I've made a new column for each one of the ones in my original truth table. Now, why did I do this? Well, I just showed you a moment ago that I can take a truth table with exactly one one in it and create a product, an AND, right? So all four of these, X0 is going to be a product. It's not going to be exactly this product, but I'm going to just lay the foundation. So I've got X sub 0 is that product. X sub 1 is going to, or it's not that product, but it's a product. X sub 2 is going to be a product of A, B, and C. And X sub 3 is also going to be a product of A, B, and C. All right. Which inputs get inverted, though? Remember, the, the inputs have to get inverted in order to move them up and down, in, move the ones up and down in that truth table. For example, what does it take to move the one of an and from the bottom row, where A is a one, B is a one, C is a one, what does it take to move that up to the second row, where A is a zero and B is a zero and C is a one? Well, that's a this one right there, to put that one right there in the second row of the truth table, it needs to be A is not a one, B is not a one, and C is a one. And we invert A and B, all right? Now, what does it take to move the one from the bottom row of an AND gate, a regular straightforward AND gate, to the fourth row where X1 has its one? Well, we want to output a one if A is not a one, B is a one, and C is a one. So that's a bar B and C. X2, how do we get a 1 to the fifth row? Well, the fifth row has A is a 1 and B is a 0 and C is a 0, so we invert B and C. And how do we get a 1 to the seventh row? Well, the seventh row has A is a 1, B is a 1, C is a 0, so we invert C. Now, what does this do for us? Well, we've created four circuits, right? Well, how do we get those four circuits to come back into the original X? Well, the original X is just the OR of X0, X1, X2, and X3. So X is simply equal to X0 or X1 or X2 or X3. There you go. Now it's just a matter of substitution. And we have taken our very first truth table and converted it into a Boolean expression. Let's go ahead and do it. X is equal to A bar and B bar and C, or A bar and B and C, or A and B bar and C bar, or A and B and C bar. All right, now. That is what we refer to as a sum of products 
expression, sum of products, sometimes referred to as an SOP, right? Okay, so our sum of products expression, how do we get that? Well, a sum, it's a sum, right? The oaring of a bunch of products, ands. So anytime you take a bunch of ors and you put them into an and, excuse me, take a bunch of ands and put them into an or, you've got this sum of products expression. Now, the reason why, and we'll show this in the next lesson, the reason why this is a really important format for our circuit is, is that except for the odd inverter, this is two layer logic. And remember, every time that a signal propagates through a layer, it incurs a little bit of delay. We talked about that when we talked about simplification. If I can remove layers that a signal has to pass through before its effect is felt on the output, every layer I can remove, every stage I can remove, makes the circuit faster. Well, it turns out that for, for uh, the random truth table, to get a circuit down to two layers of logic is a very... It, it, it's, a, it's, it's the most efficient way that we can create a truth table. Now, the other thing is, is we can take this sum of products expression and simplify it somewhat. Using the distributive law, I can, out of the first two terms, I can pull out A bar and C. And this will give me B, and, and so when I pull A bar and C out of the first term, I'm left with B bar ord with, I pull A bar and C out of the second term, I'm left with B, all right? That looks like one of the identities, right? I've got a red flag showing. Anything ord with its inverse is what? Well, it's equal to one. We'll show you that in a second as soon as we pull A and, B, A and C bar out of the second two terms. So A and C bar pulled out of the second terms, I'm left with B bar or B. All right, so this simplifies B bar or B turns into one, so we get A bar and C and one, or with, and B bar and B, B bar or B becomes one again, so A and C bar and one. And then the ones, anything anded with one, that becomes one, it becomes itself. So this becomes X is equal to A bar and C or A and C bar. All right. Now, this may seem kind of, well, like a, like uh, we, we created just this random truth table, but I want you to look at something. This, this right here says that if A is different than C, in other words, a, if A is a zero and C is a one, or if A is a one and C is a zero, those are the only two ways that A and C can be different. If A is different than a C, then we output a one. So we come down here, these are the same, output a zero. These are different, output a one. These are the same, output a zero. These are different, output a one. Different, one, same, uh, zero. Different, one, same, zero. Well, it turns out that that's just the exclusive or, but we didn't know that when we created this truth table. We see it now after the simplification. Now, let's do the circuit for this guy real quick, and we'll show you how this becomes two-layer logic. I don't have any room over here, so I'm going to try and, and do it over here. So I'm going to use something called bus notation. Now, bus notation is, is this... I'm going to take A, B, and C, and I'm just going to make these lines where they are uh, these continuous wires, and we're just going to simply tap off of those wires where we need access to the signal. Now, this is going to get a little crowded here, but let me go ahead and do this circuit real quick. We have two AND gates, two products, so I'm going to make one AND gate, a second AND gate. And the output for those two AND gates are going to go into an OR gate. So I'm going to create my OR gate, and there's my X. All right. And what you're looking at here is the general format for a sum of products expression expressed as a logic circuit. There's going to be AND gates that go into an OR. So multiple AND gates, multiple products being summed together with a single OR gate. Now, how do I represent the inverters? Well, remember whenever we were first introducing inverters, we talked about how it's the circle that actually does the inverting, 
In fact, we showed this when we did the NAND gate, right, where we just simply put a circle at the tip. Well, we can also put a circle at the inputs. And the way we do this is, well, the first one is put a dot there to show that there's a connection, and we do a bar, put a zero there, O, circle, right? Then ANDed with C. So this right here is A bar and C. This gate right here is this product. So we're just going to take A, go straight in, and then C going into an inverter before it goes into the AND gate, which gives us A and C bar. So in a matter of minutes, what we did was we took a truth table, just, just made up a truth table, right? And by breaking it up into different circuit elements, or excuse me, different truth tables, where each one of those truth tables represented one of the ones from the original truth table, we could come up with products for each one of those sub truth tables, products, and then if we or them together, we come back to the original truth table, we can simplify it, and then we can get the circuit. In the next lesson, we're going to start talking about a little bit more, we're going to dig a little bit more into this idea of a sum of products expression by taking a look at some existing sum of products expressions and going backwards into the truth table.